Hi everyone, this is Rich and this is Beekeeping with Rich where we go all over little tricks and trades of the trade and little odds and ends rather than big major beekeeping issues. Today is November the 15th here in sunny South Florida. The temperature is about 78 degrees. Uh, it's beautiful as it almost always is down here and uh, we're going through the beekeeper's closet. This is beekeeper's closet part three apparently uh, because we don't make our videos very long so we're gonna be uh, in beekeeping video closet or beekeepers closet part two we went over what was in the main body of the closet and now we're gonna go through what's on the doors we went through a little bit of it in uh, episode one which uh, was kind of almost an accident so we'll just very quickly go through it. Right here we have our uh, ultimate robbing screens. You'll notice last time there was only one here because all three of the hives back there had their robbing screens on them. I want you to turn and look that way for a moment. Okay, now you can come back. So what's there right now are one by one pieces of oak which are heavy enough to stay in place and act as a guard until such time as I put the robbing screens back on. At the moment we're in our fall flow which is primarily Brazilian pepper, palm trees, uh, a lot of palm tree species are flowering, loquats flowering, um, a few other things that provide good bee forage or flowering. In the weed category, what we call Florida snow, otherwise called Florida pusley, is coming out. As always, we have many weeds that are year round. This will all be done with in another week or so, and I will be putting the robbing screens back on, but there was no need to make them do all that extra work of up and down and all around while we were in the middle of a flow. Pollen's coming in like there's no tomorrow. Um, so, robbing screens there. The push pins that hold the robbing screens on are on a piece of foam attached to the front and they're spaced far enough away so that I can grab them with uh, gloved hands if need be. Makes it much easier. Uh, this is just stuck there. We've already gone through these in another video. They're my little awnings for over the entrances to keep the pounding rain off. These of course are just standard entrance reducers both for eight frames and for five frames. These are usually, I don't know, they call them queen excluders. I don't know why they're queen includers more than anything else. Rarely get used down here. Below that, a cork in case I need to close off a uh, entrance real quick. A short strap in case I need to transport a uh, beehive. Most of the straps I don't cut, they're super long. But if I needed to just transport a nuke and need to tie it all together, I just grab a ratchet strap, hook this short strap onto it, and away we go. This sock in, this toe of a sock, has uh, naphtha crystals in it, uh, the kind that is safe for bees, not the ones that aren't safe for bees. This loop has some of the little temporary upper entrances in it that I set underneath the entrance on honey supers so that they have a little landing pad. These, uh, Bungee cords are the right length for either hooking down an eight frame or a five frame to make sure the lid stays on during the transport. Down here, of course, I already showed you. These are for different sizes of interest depending upon the amount of uh, activity. I can get it down. Some of these are cut so that I just leave this much, but it's at the bottom rather than going through the uh, ultimate robbing screen. My uh, Be Gone is down here in case I need to use it. 
with uh, the fume board. Now around over to this side, we have our wide variety of uh, hive tools. Tried different ones over the years. My favorite is this configuration right here. But, I put a handle on one side. Now that's just a piece of wood epoxied on. Uh, no drilling, no rivets or anything like that. Just a good two-part epoxy and shape to it. Makes this into a much better tool because if it's laying there, you can grab it with a gloved hand or if it's laying upside down, even easier to grab. Good lever action and prying. So this configuration, don't know what it's called, it has the 30 degree angle on here. It's a straight line tool. Rather than having a piece on the end there, works quite well like this. As we get into videos where we're keeping the bees, you'll undoubtedly see me using it. But putting a handle on one side, why just one side? Well, I do have a magnetic holder that I often use and I just slap it against the magnetic holder. And this is plenty of grip right here. A few extra queen cages. I keep a stainless steel one over there in the mailbox. We've gone through that before. <coughs> a magnetic strip across here keeps knives. Serrated knife really isn't useful out here, but this little knife, I'm a foundation less beekeeper. They make their own comb. Towards the ends, they'll oftentimes start to diverge. A little slice along the bar push it back in place, maybe rubber band, put it back in, they fix it. So when you come across it, why well, go, well, I'll do it next time when I have a knife. It's just better to have the knife. A scraper for the uh, IPM boards when they're in use, keep them nice and clean because otherwise there's enough pollen. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, honey. <clears throat> there's enough pollen uh, falling through that literally you can get wax moths uh, brooding up in the pollen. A pair of pliers because it's a whole lot easier most of the time to push this. I use southern pine for my boxes and a lot, most of the time it's a lot easier to push this push pin in with a pair of pliers than it is with your hand. You saw this in the last video. These are little pieces that you can tuck into an Amiri shim to block off the entrance if you don't want the entrance on it. I can, don't think I need to explain why you want a level. You want to make sure your bees are level. Particularly, like I said, I'm a foundation less beekeeper. So if I'm not level side to side, I'm going to have all kinds of wonky comb but you don't necessarily want it level front to back you want to set it up level front to back but then you want to tilt everything ever so slightly to the front and the more permanent ones are done with these plastic shims we went over this piece last time it's for Hive beetle traps. You can set your traps in here, put your uh, either your oil or your diatomaceous earth. I prefer diatomaceous earth in them, and then you can just production line putting them into your hives. I already demonstrated the use of the feather. I don't use bee brushes anymore, but you do accumulate them, and hey, you never know when you might want one. Now, this is a Michael Bush thing, which I highly recommend. Mm -hmm. Michael Bush uses these long shims like this to make upper entrances. 
And voila, you have an upper entrance. And if you use a telescoping cover over this, index to the front, it's a covered upper entrance. This is the way he does it. It's useful. Seals in the side just fine. Shims like this. If you have these things handy when you decide that there's a need for them, you can see these have all been well used in the past. Good to go. A marker. And a little piece of tube right there. But nothing more valuable out here than a marker to mark everything. Down below. Don't use them very often, but a grabber. A hammer because who knows when you have to whack something. And an indexer, when you're up in a honey super and you decide, in my case, that I want seven instead of eight, it allows me to evenly space them across. And that pretty much displays everything that's in the beekeeper's closet. So there you have all my secrets. Have a great day. Hope this was useful to you. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye for now.